So the next thing we need to do is center our cursor and hide our cursor because when we press play, although in certain versions of Unity, I think after version 5.1, it automatically does it. You'll notice here, my mouse still does appear. Yours may not appear. The reason is because I started this series in version 5.0 and the version I'm using now is 5.3. It doesn't make too much of a difference, but if you want uh, your mouse to disappear, then we just need to uh, do one quick thing. Um, I think we'll go into 000 area start and we just need to add um, two lines of code, which is going to be real simple. So in there, function start, what we need to do is, um, let me think, it'd be cursor dot um, visible. So that will be visible, yeah, visible. I don't think it's a capital V. No, it's not. It's fine. Equals false semicolon. Next thing is going to be screen dot. That's lock cursor. And that's a lowercase l and a capital C on cursor. And then equals true semicolon and save. So now go back to Unity and press play. When it's had a quick think about it, obviously. The more scripts you have, the longer it will take to have a think. So there we go, my mouse has disappeared. And when I press escape, it's fine. The mouse doesn't actually appear, which is at the moment something we will alter in the next episode. So you can press Ctrl and P to get out the game mode. Now what we'll do is, um, we'll finish this tutorial up, we shouldn't take too much longer, we'll pick up our axe, because the next tutorial we'll be playing around with the lock state and visible cursor again, because we'll be doing um, a, an inventory in the next episode. So for now, let's head back to our fake axe with our cube. So I'm going to right click, uh, rename, I'm going to call it axe block. And I'm going to drag and drop the axe onto that axe block just to keep everything together. Now what we need to do is we need to go game object, 3D object cube. We need to set a trigger to pick up this axe. So I'm going to make it um, 0 0.5 in height. I'm going to make it slightly bigger. So I'm going to make 1.1, 1.1. So we've got uh, a bigger kind of area to pick up. So I'm going to right click, rename, and let's call this axe trigger. And I'm going to drag that onto axe block again. So we're going to need to write a script now. So right click, create and script, and let's call this um, axe pick up. So in this script, as I say, we're going to reference that player casting script. So let's get that straight first. So we need var. Let's have the distance because we need to measure the distance as a float. And that will be equal to player casting dot distance from target. Now just to be clear, just so you know, what we're referencing there is our player casting script and this variable here, which we actually need to change to static. So make sure that distance from target is a static variable. So now that's valid. So we've got that. That's no problem. Next variable is going to be our text display. So text display and that is the object the UI object we created earlier and that is game object semicolon next thing we need is going to be uh, var fake axe which is the axe we're going to pick up off the block so game object next one is going to be the real axe the axe we're going to hold so var real axe game object. 
Okay, so we're going to do a couple of functions here because there are going to be a few different ways we're going to use this. So to make sure that our player casting script is always being referenced in this script, we're going to do uh, a function update first. Function update. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And what we need to do is make sure we do the distance is equal to player casting dot distance from target. So realistically, you probably don't really need to worry about putting that in up here, as it'll end up here anyway, but it's good practice to make sure. So that's all we need for the function update. The next um, update we're going to, uh, sorry, the next function we're going to use is going to be one called on mouse over. Now this function will be used when our mouse passes over <clears throat> the object that we need to look at to display something. So it'll be function on mouse over, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And in this function, we need to do an if statement. Oops, I've actually typed an if statement there. It's a bit silly. So if <clears throat> the di uh, distance is less than, and let's have, re uh, in fact, we'll have less than or uh, equal to three, then we want our text display, text display, dot get component dot open spiky bracket text close spiky bracket open close bracket dot text equal to take axe and then semicolon and then close the if statement and close the function. So what we're doing here is when our mouse passes over with a distance of equal to or less than three, passes over the axe, then the text display that we created earlier will say take axe. So on uh, the flip side of that, when our mouse isn't over that object, we need it to be blank. So function on mouse exit, open close bracket, open curly bracket. We want to copy this line of code paste, and instead of take axe, just have two double quotes. And then close curly bracket. And then finally, the last function we need is the one where we execute what we're doing. So that's going to be on mouse down. So function on mouse down, open close bracket, open curly bracket. If the distance is um, put less than or equal to three, then we need to perform the following actions. And we're going to have, so firstly, we need to actually move this trigger way off screen. So transform dot position equals vector three, open bracket, and let's put it somewhere we'll never ever see. So zero, comma, minus 1000, comma, zero. Close bracket, semicolon. Next thing we need to do is make our axe appear in our hand and then make the fake axe disappear. So real axe dot set active is true. And then fake axe dot set active is false. Semicolon, close the if statement and then close the function and save. And let's head back into Unity. Hopefully, after it's had a think, we shouldn't have any errors. I think we've got that all right. And it's looking good. So the next thing we need to do is, oh, I've put loot bag in there for some reason. Not quite sure why. It's a bit silly of me. I wanted axe in there. Just notice that. So axe block in there. Okay. So what we need to do now is on the axe trigger, we need to put our axe pickup straight there. 
click on it, and then we need to define these. So fake axe. So right click on the axe that's on the block, uh, rename, and let's actually call this fake axe so we don't get confused. Dra oops. Drag and drop that into the um, game object box there. Uh, text display goes into text display, and then finally, our actual axe that we pick up straight into there. And last but not least, on the trigger, let's turn off the mesh renderer. I'm going to save my project now and then press play. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's head all the way over to our axe. And hopefully, hopefully, we should be able to actually look at our axe and it'll tell us that we can pick it up and we'll pick it up and the axe will appear and the fake axe will disappear. So let's give it a go. Okay, so that's not quite working for whatever reason. So our distance looks a bit funny there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is in our air, 000 area start, I'm going to take off cursor visible for now and screen lock cursor, save and tell you what, make things easier. I'm going to move our first person controller closer to the object. There we go. Okay, so let's bring our player over here, bring them up a touch, and let's give this a go. So on our player, oops, on our player, not the player, sorry, the axe trigger. We want to look at this particular. Okay, so let's go. Okay, it's not quite working as expected. Not quite sure why. So let us try um, lock the cursor. So let's keep lo uh, screen dot lock cursor equals true. Try again. So this is uh, all trial and error, as you can see. Sometimes it um, can be a little bit of a pain. Okay. So let's head over to our axe. And we still can't do Okay. This is actually quite confusing, I've got to be honest. So let's try uh, moving our axe off the bridge. Uh, let's bring it down to, um, about there. Let's take our axe trigger out there just in case that could be the problem. So let's try once again. Let's head over there. Okay, there we go. Not quite sure why the bridge caused that kind of problem, but as you can see, it's working now. Well, it's displaying correctly. We may need to change. Our... In fact, I think I know why that's happening. It's because of the collider we have on our first person character, maybe bigger than we think it is. To get around that, what you need to do is on the axe pickup, rather than have it as three, you could change that to maybe five. So the, la the, the larger that number is, the further away you can be. So it just depends on your game world scale. So in the case of our game world scale, I think we've just discovered that five is probably a good number. So let's try again. Trial and error, as I always say. So head over, let's take our axe. And it didn't stop displaying our axe properly. Okay. <laughs> I love Unity so much. Okay, so yeah, the reason is in the axe trigger, I've actually put axe and not weapon. Don't you just love it when a tutorial goes to plan? Sarcasm there. Okay, so finally, I can guarantee this will now work. So we head on over to our axe. It tells us to take axe, take our axe, and there we go. And we can swing our axe. 
So that is effectively how we're going to be picking up objects in the future. For example, when we, um, I don't know, pick up other objects and other weapons and we put them in our inventory. And as I said earlier in this tutorial, we're going to be working on the inventory in the next episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching.